Hi, I'm Brett Ryan, part of the team here at Focus on the Family, and we are celebrating our 30th anniversary here of ministering to families in Australia. And uh, we do that in a variety of ways. Radio is one way. We're in about 800 plus radio stations across uh, this great nation, and which equates to about 2 million people. So it's an incredible privilege. We also run marriage retreats, uh, seminars, presentations, uh, YouTube channel, uh, our social media, and our website. There's a variety of different ways that we can help you and your family thrive in Christ. And that's actually our mission, to make Christ known as we strengthen relationships in Australian families. And uh, it is indeed an honor. And thank you so much for watching this series. We're going to be in two parts. Uh, uh, about resilient families. It's a bit of a buzzword, resilient families, and uh, we want you and your family, not, as I said, to just survive. We want you to thrive. And some people say, is it nature? Are people naturally more resilient? Well, yes. Uh, can you uh, nurture it? Yes. And that's what I hope to be able to do over the next two sessions. In fact, we're doing it in two parts. The first part is what is resilience? And uh, and we're going to unpack about why it is so important. And the second part is the keys to helping you and your family become more resilient. So what is it? What is resilience? Well, it's the ability to bounce back after adversity or hardship. And we all do that from time to time. And uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Michael Anderson, and he wrote, for most of our kids, their life will be more difficult than they anticipate. Isn't that the truth? And it's our job as parents to help them become more resilient enough to face those adversities. Easier said than done. But I'm hoping by the end of these two sessions, you'll become more familiar about what you do and what you role model as you become uh, the, the, the number one influence over your children's lives. And then you become more resilient and then it'll help your kids become more resilient. Adversity, problems, challenges, we all have them. We've all been outsized and outrun and outwitted and outplayed. In fact, it sounds a bit like uh, something from Survivor. And all those things can actually influence uh, how our kids go through life because there's always going to be someone bigger. There's always going to be someone faster. There's going to be someone who's smarter. There's going to be someone who's a bit more clever. Um, how do they go through those things? But what we want our kids to be able to say is, I may not be the fastest. I may have gotten a poor start. And that's true. Sometimes those circumstances beyond their control have resulted in them being a little bit behind the eight ball. But I'm going to get back up and keep on running. Wow, that's so true. How do we do that? How do we, what are the things that they're going to be facing with? And, you know, being outsized, outrun, outwitted, outplayed. Well, sometimes it's just sort of things that are all part of our lives, whether moving house, moving schools, new friends or no friends, which is a very common thing. Uh, you know, having exams and homework. Can you believe it? I have to do homework. Uh, chores, uh, sickness and injuries, um, and even death. That's part of life. And maybe it's a, uh, their pet dog or their rabbit. I remember when my uh, rabbit died, I was sobbing. You know, like I thought, this is it. And, and I'm an adult. And it was only this little fluffy little thing called, <laughs> called Flopsy. But, um, you know, it, it doesn't affect us. And our children watched me, how I process my grief, how I bounce back. And, uh, and then they can do it too. There's a, a great statement that I, I saw this. It's crucial to keep in mind that no matter how nonsensical and frustrating our children's feelings may seem to us, they are real and important to our child. It's vital that we treat them as such in our response because it's easy to be dismissive. It's easy to say, hey, you're, over, you're, you're overreacting, uh, which always works. Uh, calm down. You're, this is over the top. Uh, those things, but we have to put ourselves in their lens or put their perspective that from their eyes. Some of the things they're going through, we may feel like it's trivial, but for them, this is the biggest thing. And so we need to help them see it, uh, you know, with a different perspective, help them come alongside them and to be their cheerleader. And then that earns you the right to actually give that constructive feedback from time to time. But we'll talk about that a little bit later on because we're all going to go through uh, difficulties. 
And life isn't always easy. In fact, there's another quote that I saw, don't handicap your children by making their lives easy. We've all heard of the helicopter parenting or the uh, bubble wrap parenting. We've also heard of the new one called drone parenting, which is a bit more modern and a bit more up to date, where we try and protect our children from the ills of this world, to try and protect them from going through difficulties, because we want our kids to be happy. And that's, that's a great goal, but we need to equip them with the skills to be able to go through adversity, to go through challenges, to have that resilience when things don't go to plan, that they can actually have the tools and the uh, reservoir of knowledge and the toolkit, so to speak, to be able to go through some of those different areas. So you're actually doing your kids a disservice by trying to protect them. There's a new other, another word called lawnmower parenting, which means you make everything smooth. We don't want to have any bumps in the road. And that's not good either. And so children need to learn to take responsibility, take those things that they can do uh, for their actions so that they do not become adults believing that nothing is their fault. Oh, ain't that the truth? When they, you know, it's, it's my teacher's fault for not giving me the right uh, information. Uh, it's my sibling's fault for making me so angry and so mad. It's going to be my boss's fault for not allowing me to go onto Facebook when I really wanted to. Um, my, blame my, uh, my spouse of the future for making my life a misery. We need to actually start as early as possible to equip our children to take more responsibility for their not only their actions, but their words and their attitude to prepare them to not blame everyone around us for their misadventures. All right. There's, I understand there'll be some people watching this that may not have a faith, but I'm going to be using some Bible verses from time to time that help me um, Using God's word as a as a as a guide or as a, as a, um, a a sort of like a toolkit of how to parent well, and hopefully you'll be able to uh, look past it if it's not faith is not your um, familiar with, but it will also be something that you can actually apply the some of the practical principles for what. I'll be able to share with you today. One verse that many people know: so train up a child in the way that he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. It's not guarantees. This is a proverb, and this proverb is helping you um, and giving you the responsibility, the incredible privilege it is to train up your children in the way that they should go, in the way that they are hardwired, the way that they are naturally uh, geared, uh, they are intrinsically wired, and you can help them and guide them. But at the end of the day, this is the way that God has designed them. And your job is to tap into their natural temperament, their natural personality and uh, and what they're passionate about, what they're not. And we need to tap into that because we shouldn't train them up in the way that we want them to be and live vicariously through them, but we want them to become the best version of themselves, how God had intended. So let's go into this area about resilience. It includes two factors. One is there has to be some sort of risk or adversity. That's, a, that's the no-brainer. And we don't like that. We don't like necessarily... <laughs> ourselves go through risk or adversity. Um, so what our kids are observing from us may actually have a flow on effect. The second factor of um, resilience is that there needs to be a positive adaptation or a level of competency that they can actually get through things. And that's what we all want to when we don't know what to do and what to say. And when there's a situation that's beyond our control, sometimes it may be because of our own poor choices, but maybe the choices of others or maybe circumstances. We want to have a, a positive outcome. And that's what resilience is. Those two factors, there's a risk and adversity, but we also know we and need to have an aim for not only ourselves, but for our children, that when we see a problem or a difficulty, that we can find a solution and a positive outcome. And that's what we want. The enemy, Satan, wants to get the better of us, wants to take advantage of that. And there's a great verse where it says, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's what he wants to do for you uh, individually, but if you and your family, your marriage, um, he wants to destroy that. But God came, Jesus came, that we may have life and life to its full. And, and this is easier said than done. But there are some tools and some things that I'm going to be able to help you navigate to become more resilient in this situation where things are going to get out of hand, things are difficult, things are tough, but it is doable. 
So one thing you could do, and the reason why some children are becoming less resilient is because we're doing too much for them. We don't want them to go through hard times. We don't want them to go through difficulties. And so don't do things for your children that they can do for themselves. Well, that's, um, I, I would like to think that, you know, if your child can make their bed, let them make their bed. If their child can make their lunch, let them make their lunch. If their child can actually remember to do their homework, they have to face the consequences if they don't do their homework. See what I'm saying? Don't do things that they can do for themselves. And the more they take on responsibility, the more resilient they're gonna become in the long term. And in fact, the more resilient they become, the, the greater the ability that they can actually cope through stress. And that's something that we might talk about a little bit later on. I say, so when a situation happens that a child is going through a difficulty, a, 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 maybe a problem at school, for example, you need to ask them questions. What do you think you should do? Because we can go into solution mode, we can fix it because we've got our adult eyes, we've got our adult experience, we've got our adult um, expertise, but we need to help them become more skilled in those areas. So asking them questions, what do you think you should do? Or how would you like to resolve this issue? You know, give them some autonomy, give them some power, give them some guidelines. And it may be that you might have to step in a little bit, but not overpower, not to take over, but actually to say, what do you think about these options, for example? And then they can actually make their own choice. Little things can make all the difference. Asking questions, not telling them all the time, actually gives them the, uh, the confidence to deal with the little things to be able to cope with the bigger things. We might think they're little now, but they're big for them right now, putting it through the lens of a child. But we need to help them uh, have the, the reservoir of knowledge and understanding. So when there is a difficulty, when there's a problem, not to freak out, not to panic, not to be overwhelmed, but actually say, hey, there is a solution to this. What do you think you could do? So a little step-by-step -step thing is, what? how do we do that? Well, the first thing is to find the problem. So what's the problem at the moment? What's the difficulty? What's the thing that is hurting the most? What is the thing that actually is giving you the most amount of pain? And these principles can apply in, uh, in our lives as well. So define the problem is, and then let's evaluate some of the solutions. What are, what are the possible scenarios? You know, it's like a pro and con list. Here's A, B, C, and there's D, E, F. You know, which is, which is gonna be better? Um, then we need to have a bit of a plan or an action to you know, put into place. So even, even with the amount of information we have, and sometimes people say, oh, I wanna make the best decision. Sometimes you need to make a decision. And then maybe as you're actually putting into action, then you need to adjust the plan and then as necessary, make those appropriate changes. Um, sometimes we need to start something, you know, like the a thousand miles starts with the first step. And we need to help our kids to say, hey, you might make a mistake. It's okay. You can fail forward. That's okay. Making mistakes is part of life. Taking risk is part of life. It's okay not to be perfect. It's okay not to become um, proficient in everything, but you have to start somewhere. So what do we do to find the problem? Evaluate the solutions, pro and con list, or sometimes just a bit of a brainstorm. Uh, develop that plan of action and put it into action, and then maybe make those adjustments very simple, and I think it's very, very doable. Now, what do we do? At this time, when uh, this great author said this, now is the time, this is your time, and it is our time, and I, I'm a father of three young men, and I've got three grandchildren, and I'm actually encouraging my children to bring this. Now is the time to help them to learn to think for themselves and embrace the problems of life as opportunities to learn. We all have opportunities to learn. And maybe, maybe those challenges, those obstacles, those difficulties, those risks, those adversities, those challenges is a great opportunity for them to start to learn. We at Folks on the Family have a variety of different resources, including a free family um, FamilyCast platform. It's got all of videos. And if you'd like to find out more, you can go on to familycast.com 
familyfamilies.org.au or just go simply to our website at families.org.au and you can find and download that onto your app, onto your phone, uh, onto your tablet, onto your desktop, whatever it may be. So you can watch all the variety of different videos on parenting, on marriage, on life issues. And we've also got these uh, devotions. And if you'd like to get a devotion like this uh, for you and your family, you can just contact us and we'll be able to post that out to you free of charge. And they have all been become made available because of the generous support of people like you that have a heart for families. And if you'd like to contact us, you can go to our website at families.org.au. It's a great new website, but it's got a easy to maneuver different things. And in fact, over 8,000 different content of podcasts, videos, articles, resources, PDFs. And if you can't find that, please contact us and we'll send it to you in the right direction. Because we're like a one-stop shop uh, from in utero to the grave and everything in life throws at you in family and relationship. And so we are rely on the generosity of people like you to continue to help more families thrive in Christ. We'll see you for part two next time.